Hi everyone and welcome back to Rise with Sarah Sincotta. I am your host Sarah and today we have the amazing team from mobilelenders.com.au, Sean Massey and Adam Healy. Thank you so much for joining the channel today. Thanks Sarah. Thanks great, for having us. It's great to see you. Great to see you. So a bit of an intro, I'd like to start it off. Um, tell us about Sean and Adam. Excellent. Right, Ed. Um, yeah, so I've been a finance broker for about four years now. Um, joined the team then um, just as COVID hit, which was really good timing. Uh, before then, I was in import companies and did uh, several day spa companies as well. So I had sort of a business background, um, but I enjoyed the finance side of things. So I decided to move into this area. Awesome. Excellent. Um, so that. Uh, MobileLender.com.au is my business. So I've had this going since 2015. Um, I've been in banking and finance since day dot. So I've coming up to nearly 30 years. Um, variety of things from uh, business banking right through to um, working overseas with the bank and then back over here in Australia. Um, I've got a family. I've got a beautiful wife and a beautiful little three-year-old girl, um, which dominates my time and uh, happy for that to be the case. Yeah. And so, yeah. Awesome, guys. So today, the purpose of this is we want to explore working with lenders, especially in the property management industry, because there is a lot of emphasis on a lot of sales agents uh, teaming up with lenders and supporting their clients. But it seems that the property management side has been forgotten about. And now with the role of property management evolving into new uh, titles identifying as asset managers or property advisors. I think it's so important that the expansiveness of the knowledge of lending is across the board for property managers. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. I think, and I, I, I think there's a, a very similar or very close relationship that we have with our clients is what the property managers and the BDMs do as well in that space. And it's, how I see it is like how you retain your clients, but also grow your clients. And that's no different. And I think that's where we do work very closely with, um, you know, various property managers to actually facilitate that. Yeah, so for sure. Yeah. So let's explore that. Um, so yeah. what do you think the benefits to a property manager or a business development manager is when working with people like yourself? Yeah, um, I'll, I'll take that one. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so as I said, like one, from a property manager and the BDM point of view, it's like, you know, you've got your existing portfolio. So retaining that, making sure that the those clients are looked after. So from the work that um, they do and making sure the asset, the house, the apartment is looked after, the tenants are looked after. But then also if those landlords do have debt for those properties, looking after that. So making sure that those loans are reviewed so that the landlord's getting the best possible deal. Um, they're, they're improving their financial position. So that's where we can facilitate that. And then secondly, growing your portfolio. So how can you actually help your landlords grow their own investment portfolio, which then flows back to growing the property manager's portfolio. And yeah. so that's sitting down and understanding the landlord's goals, what they're trying to achieve, actually help them then take the buy the if it's a second one or a third property or whatever it may be that suits their their goals for their investment portfolio, um, and that's where we sit down our client our client base. We have a lot of investors and we do that, so it's no different doing that for our clients as what it is to actually helping it working with um, property managers for that space. Yeah, absolutely, and I think um, a lot of investors tend to leave property management till last, whereas yep. when you have I like to look at it is that you need a team of people. To, to help yep. you with that decision and to support your goals. So mm -hmm. it's having that relationship with uh, lenders so that if you've identified your investor goals or your client goals, that you've got someone that's part of your team that can support that. Because a lot of landlords, and I see it um, all the time in these you know Facebook groups, is that they are looking to purchase another property. Yeah, they are looking to build on their growth. So that's where I think that can tie in really nicely. And the other yep. thing I was thinking, Sean and Adam, is that, you know, property managers, they're not expected to understand that side of things or, or touch or speak about, you know, what's going to be the best option for them in growing yep. their portfolio, right? However, they can oh, utilize, absolutely. yeah, they can utilize your services in even when it comes to um, emails and digital marketing. 
and to mm-hmm. provide that knowledge. So, you know, this week we've had another uh, rate hold, which is great news. Um, but how amazing is it if a property management business was tied to people like yourself that could send out an email to their clients? What does this mean for them? Oh, definitely. And I, I think it's really important because I, I think a lot of the situation is that people just to sh- or think that other people know what all that means, but they don't because they've got other things to worry about. Yeah. But when it's pointed out and actually how it may impact or benefit you, then I think that's a real value add um, for for our, anyone's clients. So yeah. that's my so for definitely. And and no different to when you've got other types of um, business partners that you work with, be it for example solicitors. You know, they may reach out to us for lending advice and then vice versa, we might tap into them to get some technical advice that we might need for a, a particular transaction. So it's it's like you said, it starts how you have that team of people around you to get the best outcomes uh, for your clients. And that's, yeah. that's what it's about because you want the client to think about, okay, I've had that experience because, you know, um, you know, Sean at uh, the local real estate agency gave it to me. So then when I'm thinking about, okay, where do I then want my property managed? I'm going to go back to Sean because, mm-hmm. you know, he, he looked up that, that that time. So rather than thinking, oh, I might need to go get another property manager or another broker, whatever it might be, I've got that positive experience. Yeah. And I think it's the the network opportunities and the collaboration opportunities, I think is is huge because you would rely on the expertise of property managers at some stage when it comes to doing um, rental appraisal letters for your clients if they're looking to refinance, actually looking at, okay, well, let's overview the wealth of your investment properties. And part of that is the property management side too. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. And I mean, um, Adam's got many investor clients that, you know, if you want to talk about how you, you know, you reach out to property managers to actually, you know, introduce them to your clients. Yeah. And and if they're needing a, an appraisal as well, particularly if they're needing like, um, borrowing capacities, et cetera, when we're looking for them to, to do their lending, um, getting that, having, you know, the the appraisal done so that we can put that to the lender, et cetera, so they can do all their workings and and work out what they can actually borrow it. it it's, it's very helpful. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about the investor language um, because I know there are a lot of people who work in the industry that they don't own an investment property, nor have they ever yep. gone through the experience of actually having an investment property, speaking to a finance broker or a mortgage broker before. But I feel like this is when property managers can utilize people like yourself with edu- helping educate them in terms of yep. the terminology that is commonly used from an investor and yourself. So can you talk a bit yep. about that investor language part? Oh, definitely. And I think, you know, it's when, when we have the investor language, we try to, I mean, it, the automatically you try to, you know, default to like negative gearing or, you know, tax, de, you know, depreciation schedules and things like, but like I was saying before, not everyone knows what that means, right? So we try to simplify that as much as we can um, and provide that education one to our clients. And then also not assuming, you know, our, our partners in real estate know those things as well. So, you know, providing the background as to what is a depreciation schedule, you know, when do you need it, you know, what benefits you're going to get from it, for instance. And then, like, for example, the difference, one of the main ones is the difference between lending, you know, owner-occupied loans compared to investment loans are different. Yeah. Different pricing, different um, ways you can structure them as well, like interest only, principal interest, all sorts of things. So we try to educate both our clients and our partners and, you know, give them the information. So they've got like a, you know, a cheat sheet of information, but then when they need more detailed information, okay, yeah, give us a call or, you know, we can come along to an appointment as well. Um, actually help with that. So, you know, that's, that's really important. And the other thing is it's not every investor client is the same. So you've got to make sure you're, you're tailoring the conversation and the information we give them for that particular client. And that's where it really becomes important to actually really listen to what they need. So rather than talk, let them do the talking so we can get as much information as, as we can from them. But it also gives us an idea of how much we need to give them by listening to their needs and listening to what they actually sort of really know, what their understanding and what their education is, because yeah. the d- discussion can be very different from an experienced investor to someone who's just starting. Yeah, absolutely. And given that, especially in Australia, majority of investors are mum and dad investors that have one investment property, what would be your response to 
uh, some topics out there at the moment just saying, oh, you know, investors are greedy and, oh, they're just looking to make money and, you know, looking to make profit and they don't care about the renters. What's your response to that? Okay. Well, I mean, I always bring it back. I mean, I've got a number of investment properties and I always always have. And it's, it's about how do I, you know, provide for myself and my family going forward. So it's not about how do we actually try and make money. It's everyone's just trying to make their life better. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you've got a happy tenant, you know, you're not, you've got a happy investment really. So you, you're looking after your property. I don't think there really are landlords out there. Might be a very few, but um, that try and rip everything out because that's just short term in nature yeah. um, with that as well. And I think yeah, everyone's just out there trying to build their portfolio and get a better life for themselves. And, you know, I think, you know, it's, being respectful of everyone in that. So, you know, your, your tenants are paying rent, so you've got to look after them. Mm, yeah. well, so I think it's a very, um, it's very much driven by the media in terms of those things. But um, I think there's a bit of a hype and not necessarily the, the case. And we, yeah. we definitely don't see that with our clients. Yeah. Do you agree, Adam, as well? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, you, there's some people who might have one or two and, and they, yeah, they'll just, they're making their money, but like again, I think a lot of the times the property management team get involved between the two, so they're doing a lot of that work anyway. So that relationship that the property manager has with the tenant becomes really important there. So um, it's not necessarily the discussions the tenants having with the the actual owner because that's where the property manager comes in and does all that work for them. Yeah. And this year, like, let's talk about this year because there's been, you know, and again, the media has done a really good job in, in creating this this fear um, that, you know, every landlord is selling their property. And there was a bit of panic there, yeah. um, I think, across the board in the industry. But this is where I feel there's an opportunity. And, and I know we discussed this offline, but to align yourself with businesses like you that can... I really dive deep into understanding, well, do you need to sell or do we just need to look at or have an unbiased opinion on your circumstances? Yeah. And property managers, they don't have to have that conversation. They won't know how to do that, but it's, Hey, we want to support you. Uh, If you need to sell and you must sell, then, then so be it. However, is it worth you having a chat to uh, a lender? Yeah. Like how can we help you with that? Oh, definitely. I think that, and that's very important because, yeah, the media does scare people, um, but not necessarily rightly so. And then think people may just make a, a, a instant reaction. Oh, I've got to do something to improve my position before it gets too bad. But I think, and what we've seen, particularly over this last six uh, months, is with a lot of fixed rates coming off, people have then bounced off to much higher interest yeah. rates. And that is a little bit uncomfortable. However, you know, by sitting down and understanding a situation, we can potentially restructure it. So it might be, okay, is there an opportunity to refinance to reduce your rate? Or if you're paying principal interest, how can we potentially put on interest only to free up your cash flow as well? So absolutely looking at any person's individual situation, uh, we can sit down and make a, a pretty quick um, assessment. And then, like you said, if it, if it is an issue, if there is other circumstances that's going to mean that they've got problems, okay, but be upfront. However, if you can help, then absolutely will and make their position better. Um, yeah. That's what we're obliged to do legally. We have an obligation to get the best outcome for the clients. Yeah. So, you know, if we can, we definitely, definitely will do that. Yeah. What other areas do you think there's some opportunities for this collaboration in with between property management and lending? Yeah. Um, well, I'll jump in just first. So for me, um, getting a deeper understanding, that's one of the reasons we did come along to the BDM Summit yeah. um, a while ago, is understanding your industry even further. I mean, we have good relationships, but when you've got a collective of a whole cross-section of that community, just understanding what the challenges are in the property management space and real estate agents um, space just generally, that helps us when, when we're speaking to our clients or we're speaking to uh, property managers because we can potentially go away and think, okay, well, we might be able to help in that situation. Because mm-hmm. um, you know, one of the things that came up was that education piece about lending. So, you know, we can help in that space for sure. Um, so I think that collaboration of sharing and understanding each other's industries and how that um, may impact our, you know, at the end of the day, our same client is really valuable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's going back to the influence that we can have for mutually mutual clients on what's actually happening in real life. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Um, because if you're in educating and influencing the same with the, you know, the property managers, business yeah. development managers, then it's a win-win for their clients. Yeah. I think, and um, Adam would love your, you know, insight on this is a lot of the time in property management, business development, we talk about helping clients maximize their return on their investment. What do you think this looks like and actually means? Um, yeah, well, as, as time goes, properties tend to um, go up in value or go down in value. So obtaining valuations at different times and seeing what equity is available within the property, that can de definitely help. Um, also looking at borrowing capacities as well, like as people's wages changes, et cetera, you can um, look at what their borrowing capacities are to see whether they can um, purchase more and use the equity from the valuation to then move to the next the next purchase. So yeah. yeah, that's certain stuff that we can do as well. Yeah. yeah. If I just added just a bit onto that as well. So absolutely. Um, and the other thing is when you look at your return on your investment, it's it's like two, two or three factors. So you've got capital growth, mm -hmm. you've got your income, so your rental, and then you've got your costs. And a majority of your costs relates to your interest. So how we, once again, how we improve an investor's return on investment is trying to minimize that interest cost over the life of the loan. So there's multiple aspects and then the rental side of things. And that's where the property manager is making sure they're getting the right return on for that property. And yeah. I think all those things come together. And if you can explain that to the landlord, the client, um, that and that's how they can think about it. Okay, you've got multiple people trying to help you get a better return on investment. And that's where the collaboration comes into it. Yeah. And then less... Uh clients going to ask for reduced fees from their property management absolutely you, 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 <laughs> right. take, you take that you take that um worry out of the equation because they're seeing they're getting a better return regardless yeah so, yeah and, and it's add, added value i think it's a no-brainer like to continue to have that value or at least ask the question to yep. the landlords or the clients like is there anything else that we can do to further assist you you know when was the last time you reviewed your lending have when was the last time you reviewed your goals are you on track track to reach your goals for your investment property yeah. um like for me uh you know i was an accidental investor i guess you could say um i purchased my home to live in uh, yeah. and then me and my partner moved in together and then i was doing the rent vesting so i had to change a lot of things in my strategy because i went from being uh owner occupier to now owning an investment property um, and was really like lucky that obviously my knowledge in the industry, I knew the right people to go to, to speak about that. But there's also like what you were saying earlier, that we can't just assume that our clients understand that mm. or are going to set it up the right way that actually helps them maximize having an investment property in the first place. Definitely, definitely. And, yeah. and, and a key one to that, Sarah, is also that you can't just wait till, like, okay, I'll do my tax and, you know, see my accountant or tax advisor, but that's too late because that's 12 months down the track and then you haven't been had a chance to mm. get your depreciation scheduled up and running. You haven't, you know, looked at your lending. So you, you've wasted 12 months before you've had a chance to review things. Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to share a story, but I think it's always great to, you know, share case studies. Um, when I was a business development manager, I reached out to one of my clients and he was going through some hardship and he was very honest and vulnerable about that. And I did ask one of the questions, you know, have you reviewed? He had three investment properties. Now, just by having that conversation with his client and introducing him to a broker that I knew at that time, he saved nearly $30,000 a year. And that was insane. And now the, I just had the conversation with him, made the introduction. The yeah. brokers did all the work, but this made the client feel certainty with their investment property and a peace of mind that, you know, they've restructured and it's actually working towards mm -hmm. their goals rather than just going, oh, it's too hard, give up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Spot Would on. love for you both to share some stories um, that you have been able to help yep. a, an investor during yep. this, especially over the last 12 months, I think. Yep. Oh, part of our, our business, the, what we do is like it, you obviously set up the loan for your clients, but we have the relationship which is ongoing. So as a part of our day-to-day -day actions, we regularly review our clients' loans. So, and that is reviewing the interest rate on those. So, you know, and it's not a matter of refinancing, it's it's reviewing with the existing lender and getting interest rate discounts with that. So that every every month 
we're doing that. So they're just real life stories for every client that we continue to actually review their loans, get interest rate discounts. So then their their borrowing costs are reduced straight away. So yeah. that's part of it. Yeah, there's been quite, a, as with the talk's been, a lot of these fixed interest rates that people have been on have just been they're coming off them now. Um, and a lot of those revert rates are, are, are sort of into the high sevens often. Um, it's just what the lender offers. So we can then go in and price that for the customer, um, again, by looking at the valuations, et cetera, and getting the, the right loan to value ratio and then bringing the rate down based on those type of um, examples. Yeah, so it, it can help. You, you, we can suddenly knock off perhaps a percentage um, by having a discussion with the lender on behalf of the client. Yeah, that's great. And I'm going to be like completely honest. I have not heard from my broker at all that I initially used when I purchased my my property, yep. uh, which is disappointing, right? Yep. Um, however, I through the bank that I'm with, I saw them advertise a new client rate. And I'm like, hang on a second, you're offering a new client rate of X and yep. I was on much more. So I ended up having to do my own negotiations. Yep. There was no yep. one else in my corner at that yep. time. Um, and I think a lot of people will be in the same circumstances. They don't know what they don't know. Great. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's yeah. when you come in to help the property managers add that extra layer of value to their clients and going, well, hey, this is some stories. This is how we've helped people. You've probably got some clients in your portfolio mm -hmm. who are experiencing the same thing, right? We can help take that pressure off and help them with that ease so that they are feeling more comfortable towards yep. their investment goals. Absolutely. And then and reinforcing the point there is then they've had that po positive experience with the property manager helping them. So straight away, they're always going to think about the property manager when they want to do something. Yeah, it's and just... that, that trust is there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. What do you see happening next year? I see I, what we're seeing in our, our, our space is like people are still very active. Awesome. Um, we've got a lot of buying going on, a lot of refinancing, but buying is still very strong. So I'm very confident that next year is going to be another another good year. Yeah. Um, you know, we no one knows what rates are going to do, so I'm not even going to try and yeah, um, it's not great. That, but we just we just got to deal with what they are at any point in time. But mm -hmm. I, I I generally believe people have have got accustomed to where we are, um, and then making their decisions based on where rates currently are. And I think you know we we're getting to that space, and we're seeing people. You know, it's it's just part of part of life where we are. Yeah. Um, and I look forward to, I think I look forward to next year being a good, another good strong year. Yeah. I think from where I'm sitting, there's huge opportunities out there yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, especially, yes, if there have been some investment properties that have sold, that means that there's some great opportunities there for the serious investors or yeah. those that are clear on their goals yeah. because, you know, rents have gone up. Like that's yeah. no, no secret. Um, the in terms of capital growth, like we were talking about, well, we're very lucky in, especially in Australia, um, in terms of the rate that the capital growth goes in, it's huge. And we've got a lot of people coming overseas to Australia next year. Oh, we the, the, the fundamentals of, of growth are there for the property yeah. market. And like at the end of the day, if, if someone does sell, someone's got to buy, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, it's a market that's always going to be active and, you know, it's how you can capitalize on that so but yeah i'm i'm confident we're all confident here that it's another another good year and um it's how we then we gear up to make sure our clients can go and um you know get into the market and get ready for it yeah absolutely but there's also been a, a shortage um of, of supply as well so um that's going to be really interesting to see how that goes moving forward um, yeah i think it, yeah there's looked less properties prices tend to move in a certain way mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That's why they say the greatest time to invest is today. Yep. <laughs> Tomorrow. Yep. But yep. should have, could have, will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. So for any property managers or business development managers or even directors um, yep. watching today, what would be your advice for them in terms of how to incorporate this into the departments? Yeah. Um I think and it's how we how we do it. So I talk talk the talk with it is reach out, reach out and then um, develop a relationship with a, a finance professional that you you trust. Yeah. And that's the even one that you can trust and rely on to to represent you well with your clients. Um, and that's our philosophy as well. Whenever we engage with someone, we need to trust them mm -hmm. and then be confident that they're out there um, doing what they say they'll do with our clients. And that that comes, that's the 
grill thing, but it is just reaching out, getting people involved, getting building your network of trusted advisors mm -hmm. that can actually help your your clients. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. I mean, our network very much, we, we deal a lot with conveyances and accountants. Um, so when a property manager would reach out to someone like that, it's not just adding us to the network, it's also adding our network to their network. So it all just combines together really well. I, I think that's the the beauty about having these long-term relationships with people that, you know, we talk about this all the time, but, you know, you know, like, and trust them. And yeah. then you get to also tap into their network and then that network will then open up to another network. And, and that's just the beauty of being in business and being in the industry. Yeah. yeah. That's the fun part. <laughs> that's the fun part. Yeah. yeah. I absolutely have loved our conversations today. I will pop your details on there if any um, you. You know, property managers just wants to to have a chat. But I I love that you know you guys actually came to the summit, and it really just goes to show that more and more now we are seeing people collaborating and wanting to help the industry because yeah. that helps the clients, that helps our investors, and I think that's really wonderful to see that from from both of you. Oh, we really appreciate it. Thank you for that. It's been great. As I said before, we've learned a lot. So it's been been great. Yeah. 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 So there you go. Anyone watching today in property management or business development, they need you as much yep. as you need them. Correct. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you, Sarah. Our pleasure. And thank you. And like always, everyone, keep rising. <laughs>